joining us this evening, it sounds like you didn't need to be persuaded. Um, let me introduce you to two people who probably don't need much introduction. Nick, Animal, George. So, probably everybody in the house will know this was a... Okay, can you hear me now? Thank you. Can you hear it now? Close enough? Thank you. Thanks. Probably everyone in the house knows this was a world premiere this evening, so thank you for being part of history. Um, <laughs> what I'd like to know is, what's it like watching the world premiere of your film when it's the first time you've seen it, surrounded by a lot of people that the film means a lot to? I was fucking amazing, that's all I wanted to be was a fucking star. <laughs> you fucking believe that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't know, I, don't, I always say, you know, you guys will only tell me when the fuck off like at the end of the film there, you know, I, I, have, I have no idea what I think about myself, I never have done, um, I've had to duck, duck, duck and dive all my life, if you know that, but uh, only you guys will tell me uh, what you think, so in the next few days, next few days, let me know, but remember I can fucking punch fucking hard. <laughs> right, well... Uh... <laughs> Okay, do you want to tell me how you felt watching it? You're, you remember what you said, mostly, but a lot of the rest of the, what you saw was new to you, I Yeah, yeah, I, I, obviously I can't remember. This was, uh, George has been doing this for a year and a half, you know, so my memory's fucked anyway, so uh, yeah, I couldn't remember most of it. But I found it very funny. And it's I think it was very film. cleverly edited, because there was a lot of George. things, obviously, um, uh, as the girl was probably, uh, as I said to George uh, when she first, came up uh, to do the film two years ago. Um, this could fuck your career, this film. You do know that girl. Because <laughs> she, she's quite famous in uh, what she's done with, uh, you know, recent films you've done. Um, what's that band called? Spandau Ballet. Spandau <laughs> Ballet. Yeah, the Spanners, uh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I did say to you, you know, the, 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 big, fig the big finger of doom could be pointed on you for this. Um, that made it irresistible. Well, this is what you found out, <laughs> but you haven't, you haven't lived after it yet, have you? You, you could fuck your whole career. Bring it on. That's it, you could be down big in the streets of somebody's world. Well, Bring so, it yeah. on. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is that uh, I think with, uh, with this film, I found, I found it funny. I, I found, uh, you know, things like Winston being back on, on form again, because Winston's been unwell the last few years. So him being back on form was great fun. And I think they, the, the band, uh, it, it showed a lot of history without incriminating anybody, because that's what I was right about with editing, as you always do, you take two years worth of film, but the editor can, editor can, can make you look a complete cunt, or it can actually, you know, tread very carefully around a legal situation, because I can't afford to take fucking legal people on, as you know, you know. The last thing I wanted a lawsuit around my neck, or, or some heavyweight guys wanted to bash me brains in all the time, so I thought the editing was uh, very good. Johnny Halifax. Shout out to the editor, yes. Johnny Halifax. Very good, very clever. George, tell me, how did you get involved with this gang of reprobates? Uh, she rode on my Harley, that's what it was. I uh, had a little, I yeah, took her, there. she was hooked. <laughs> she said, who the fuck are you? I said, Auntie Nobody, you must have got on the Harley, and she was fucking like, wow. It she was, was, it was oh, actually, no. the, um, I met Nick, and he said, if you come anywhere near this band, you're gonna be, yeah, you're gonna be doomed for all what? time, and I was like, yeah, all right, let's, let's have a Bring go. Bring it on. Yeah. But you will see, as I said, you know, you know hopefully this hasn't uh, you know, done anything for your career. I mean that, because uh, <laughs> you know, most people get involved with this band that end up suffering one way or the other. So. <laughs> George, it strikes me that you're making a film about a band that has a really dedicated, ferocious following. Now you know whether there's any kind of doom or curse over it. If you got it wrong, you would find out. So, did you feel like there was a lot of pressure to get it right? No. Um, get it. I don't. I don't really know what getting it right would to, be. I didn't okay. really. I don't think that you can ever make a film thinking about who's going to see it or right. how you want to shape it for a particular audience. Or I. I can't. Anyway, it's about. Um, you know, what is it? for me that is the, the story here and what do I want to say about this and what is the most 
pertinent thing for you know what's compelling for me it doesn't really it doesn't really occur to me what anyone else is going to think right was it hard to find footage from the past you know the band has yes, a long history it was where did yes. you get it from <laughs> Um, well, I knew that there was this film that Stuart Copeland had made, the So What film, in 1982, but no one had ever seen it and nobody knew where it was and it's like, you know, does it even really exist? And I, um, I wrote to Stuart Copeland and said, I'm making this film about the Anti-Nowhere League and what happened to your So What movie? And he said, I haven't got a copy of the finished film, but all the rushes, all the 16mm rushes, are in my lockup in Los Angeles, so if you want them, Oh, thank you very much. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, you got water. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Sexism. Yeah. JB, JB. Well. Someone bring me a fucking drink. Anyway. Um, See, now that's something so, else. That's something else that George has learned. How to swear, you see? She didn't use to swear. Stuart Cobb, don't you believe it? Was this thank your you. doing? But, uh, well, well, you know, it wasn't my doing, but she just learned this along the way. And she now has, knows how to, let's say, cunt. Very <laughs> well as well, because she said it to me Nick. today on the phone, twice. Nick. She said, excuse my language, <laughs> cunt, cunt. Okay, George, when you were making this film, what did you find that surprised you most? What part of this? When you spoke to someone, a story I guess that you hadn't expected? The, the, thing, the thing that really surprised me was um, these guys, you know, that they're, they're hard guys, as John Kurd says. They're, uh, you wouldn't want to mess with them as John Kurt says, as a lot of people say. But what really surprised me when I started spending time with them and talking to them was their vulnerability. And um, I could really see, you know, the, the kid whose mum wasn't really around much. And I could really see the kid who'd gone to Warstall when he was 11 and a half and come out when he was 14. And that's what I, that's what surprised me. Um, how evident, that, how transparently evident that was despite the fact that this is a band with a very hard image. Did growing up in a tough time make you tough? Uh, I couldn't, I, yeah, I mean, obviously you don't know how everybody else grows up, but uh, I do know that uh, you know, the bond the band has always had is, is, is like a family. Um, most of us come out of non-families. I mean, Magoo did, came out with a nice mum and dad, and, but, uh, most of us in the band, you know, have had our problems, and I think this is what holds us all together more. Um, this is why I, I, I went off the rails as a young man, is to find, you know, uh, a gang of guys who I could rely on and depend on, and vice versa. And I think we stuck all over the years with the band. And when you talk um, about the motorcycle gang, that was a yeah, kind of family. Yeah, the skinhead gang yeah. and the motorcycle gang and yeah, everything. What I've ever done has been in a gang. I can't help it. I, you know, it's, I uh, I know that I, I I know where I stand with, with a gang of guys. I don't know where I stand in the world, normal world. I don't like people very much. <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, I can't help it. I've tried to like them. I don't think but they just don't anything. like me very much. I don't think you're telling the truth. You make a lot of people happy with what you do. Oh yeah, you we, you obviously you know the band, that's all right. But I think I, all of us know that, you know, to, to go on in the world is, is fucking hard. And, and everybody's stabbing you in your back and the people, you know, they'll spy on your face and stab you in the back. We all know that. But with a gang of guys like the band or, or whatever, you know where you stand. You, you get respect from people and the, you, you give it back. And, uh, you know, life's more simple. Does it go beyond the band? to the audience, to the fans. I think they all understand where I'm coming from and I think I give the same respect to them as what they would with me. I, you know, I mean, if, if uh, they fuck me off, I'll punch them. It's fucking easy. And Seriously, if, if, literally. If, if, if I fuck them off, they'll punch me. Life's very simple that way and I think if, we, if you ever elect me to be, become, uh, you know, Prime Minister or whatever, the first rule I'll put in the Parliament is you're there to punch people. Because I think if we can fucking punch people, then it, life would be so fucking simple. No fucking law, no police, no fucking court cases with all the fucking months. Just punch the cunt. End the story. And if you don't, they don't like you, they fucking punch you. So, you know, end the story. Life's very simple.
speaking of anger, George, when you talk to She's gonna punch when me. you talk to Stuart Copeland and he talked a lot of nonsense. But I, I thought at the end star. he's a rock star. I thought at the they end he was nonsense. talking about the great power of being angry. It's like a nice curry. There's a great feeling. Would you he's agree with him? He's never been angry, is he? <laughs> That's it. Okay, it's more than a curry. Oh, we get so angry in, in LA. We get so angry. We sort of like tear the posters down. Yeah. <laughs> Not what, what, fucking real angry. Or you fucking want to fucking hurt somebody. That sort of angry. He never had that, you know. He's Which makes me wonder why, after you'd gone through that film experience with Stuart Copeland, obviously you're a cut above here with this woman, <laughs> but why you said yes a second time? Did you have a choice? With what? Sorry, I'm not, that's a choice. Well, thank you. You had one film experience made by someone who comes across as a complete wanker, um, <laughs> the Stuart Copeland experience. Why would you want another movie made after that? I personally know that you know i'm not going to live forever i know this and much as i think i might have done it in the past i know i'm not i just wanted a story the anti no relief to be shown I, you know I, and i think uh, what but i think the uh, the um um having the this as a I, uh, for me personally, my book is going to be the, the thing which is... Right. The book, is, the book, yes. It I've read seven chapters. Where the fuck is this book, I Nick? I know, it's, Come it's got on. the nuts and bolts, it's got all the bad bits and everything in it. I, and I know this, but the only problem is, as we know, if I'd released it 20 years ago, you know, it's, it's different. But now everyone's so fucking politically correct, aren't they? You but know, that I, doesn't... I, you know, the thing that made me want to do this film in yeah. the first place was that... So, I'd, I'd had a really... I'd had a funny two years of, of projects kind of falling at the, at the last fence and uh, stuff not happening. And then along comes Cleopatra and says, here's this money, make this film, do what you want. Uh, didn't know anything about the band. And I got sent the first seven chapters of Nick's book. And I read these and I thought, yeah, this is really interesting. I'm really intrigued by this man. You know, unfortunately, the bands of today think that they can just lure the guitar because they're amazing and then all of a sudden they're going to be stars. And, and I don't know what pe other people want from the music business. They, they want to be stars. They want to have it. For, for me personally, the only thing I want from the music business is to be able to keep doing it. You know, I, I, I've never looked any higher, uh, you know, that film showed us, you know, that we had a sudden moment we thought we was going to be Duran Duran. Life was going to be wonderful. I was going to be fucking mega rich and life was going to be fucking bag of roses. But, you know, that was a sudden glitch in, in, in the career. We fucked up and, that, and that's it. We all had to fuck up once and I fucked up and simple as that. Now I have my life is pretty fucking straight. And if I'm going to ask kids what they want out of it, the last thing I'm going to say to them is, you want to be star? You're going to be famous and you're going to be You know, no, get your fucking ass up to Glasgow and fucking work at those clubs for a few fucking months. Then tell me if you want to be a star. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the truth. You, you, you learn your stagecraft by doing the, the, doing the, doing the rough places. And I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, and many times, you know, we, we played up north. You know, the, the guys now really accept us. But for couple of years, fuck me, we had glasses thrown at us, bottled off everywhere, you know, Winston got a terrible scar down the side of his face, you know, you know. but that, that's, you know, that, that was there and then, and that was it, we had time, I'm going to shout at you, I'm like, <laughs> get rid of that old fucker. What? They wouldn't talk about <laughs> me, like that. Talking about me. <laughs> so George, when you meet people in the film world who've maybe not heard of Antino or Early, what, how do you describe them, what do you say, I'm making a film about a band from... Tunbridge Wells, uh, punk band. What do you, I, how do you describe them? Royal Tunbridge Wells, please. Royal Tunbridge Wells. Royal Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> I guess I say that I'm uh, making a film that is a study of what you would call today toxic masculinity. That's what I say. It's uh, you know what we what we see in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I don't know what the fuck they're saying? What they fucking say? Is that is it, what, what we? The, the is thing that, that really struck me right from the right from the very beginning was the vulnerability of everybody concerned in this story. Maybe uh, there's there's a minute left, so don't worry, everybody. You're not going to get bored to death by this. But you know, we've got we've got Nick, 
whose mum had kind of got over it by the time he was a kid. We've got Winston, who's in child jail at the age of 11. PJ was 15 when he came to the UK to study and then got marooned because the Ayatollah took over and his family were, uh, you know, the supporters of the Shah and so it was too dangerous for him to go back. So you've got a, you've, you've got a band where three out of the four people in that band are basically kids trying to survive a really traumatic situation and that is... Um, yeah, that's yeah, that it, for me is what what this is about really. It wasn't, it, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it, it just seemed to be the gathering of the, the year of like a magnetic joining. Yeah. It, it seems you you seem to collect together with your sad stories, and I think uh, all of us and probably all, all the audience, you know, if 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 you haven't had the perfect life, you will congregate of people similar. But then there's hardly uh, anybody who's had the perfect life. It's just that there's there's very few opportunities for people audience, that... So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's something, you know, yeah, there's there's something so, so incredibly life-affirming and cathartic about getting together in an anti-Nowhere League audience and just kind of slamming the shit out of each other in the mosh pit. It's, um, you know, there's, there's nothing better, it's really. It's better than going to war, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah it know. really is. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. If anyone would like to talk Thanks, later, Karen. we'll be at the bar.